Bacteria are single-celled microorganisms that exist in the millions in every environment, literally everywhere. Though small, they are complex and robust, and they can survive in extreme conditions, covering the whole spectrum from the extremely cold to the extremely hot environments. They even live in our guts. And you may be inclined to label them as bad and harmful at first sight, but truly, bacteria are beyond good or evil, and our relationship with them is quite complex. Sometimes bacteria lend us a helping hand, and, in many other cases, they kill us, to put it bluntly. Bacteria are thought to have been the first organisms to appear on Earth about four billion years ago, and as such, they earned the right to their own domain of life, you bacteria, or true bacteria, which means I'll be covering the topic of fake bacteria in the near future. Bacteria are classified as prokaryotes, which means they have no nucleus. Generally, bacteria are surrounded by two protective coverings, an outer cell wall and an inner cell membrane. Certain bacteria, like mycoplasmas, do not have a cell wall at all. Some bacteria even have a third, outermost protective layer called the capsule. Many bacteria have whip-like extensions covering their surface, long ones called flagella used for movements and short one called pili used to stick to hosts. Bacteria can be distinguished by the nature of their cell walls, by their shape, or by differences in their genetic makeup. The gram stain is a test used to identify bacteria by the composition of their cell walls. The test stains gram-positive bacteria, or bacteria that do not have an outer membrane. Gram-negative bacteria don't pick up the stain. For example, Streptococcus pneumoniae, which causes pneumonia, is gram-positive bacterium. But Escherichia coli, E. coli, is a gram-negative bacterium. There are three basic bacterial shapes. Round bacteria called cocci, cylindrical capsule-shaped ones known as bacilli, and spiral bacteria known as spirilia. Most bacteria multiply by a process called binary fission. In this process, a single bacteria cell, called the parent, makes a copy of its DNA and grows larger by doubling its cellular content. The cell then splits apart, pushing the duplicated material out and creating two identical daughter cells. Some bacterial species, such as cyanobacteria, reproductive via budding. In this case, the daughter cell grows as an offshoot of the parent. It starts off as a small nub, grows until it is the same size as the parent, and splits off. The DNA found in parents and offspring after binary fission or budding is exactly the same. Therefore, bacterial cells introduce variation into their genetic material by integrating additional DNA, often from their surroundings into their genome. This is known as horizontal gene transfer. The resulting genetic variation ensures that bacteria can adapt and survive as their environment changes, and that's how antibiotic-resistant bacteria, aka superbugs, are born. But hold on, guys. Before you start panicking about how super bad this is, you must keep in mind that bacteria can be beneficial to human health. Friendly bacteria share space and resources within our bodies and tend to be helpful. The human gut is a comfortable setting for bacteria, with plenty of nutrients available for their sustenance. In a 2014 review article published in the American Journal of Gastroenterology, link in description, the authors mentioned that gut bacteria and other microorganisms, such as helpful strains of E. coli and Streptococcus, aid in digestion, stave off colonization by harmful pathogens, and help to develop the immune system. See? There is no need to panic, you guys. And at any rate, there are about 10 times more microbial cells than human cells in our bodies. So you are a minority in your own body, on your own. And there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Now that we all agree that there is no point in panicking, let us talk a little bit about antibiotic resistance. Antibiotics are typically used to treat bacterial infections. However, in recent years, Improper and unnecessary use of antibiotics has promoted the spread of several strains of antibiotic-resistant bacteria. In cases of antibiotic resistance, the infectious bacteria are no longer susceptible to previously effective antibiotics. According to the CDC, at least 2 million people in the U.S. are infected with antibiotic-resistant bacteria every year, leading to the death of at least 23,000 people. Methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus MRSA for short, is one of the more notorious antibiotic-resistant bacterial strains, 
It resists methicillin and other antibiotics used to treat staphylococcus infections, which are acquired primarily through skin contact. MRSA, or MRSA infections, occur in healthcare settings such as hospitals and nursing homes, where it can lead to pneumonia or bloodstream infections. So, if there is one thing I want you to learn from this video, please, do not panic and don't abuse antibiotics. You're going to get us killed.